test. Uh, I'm recording this so you can always watch what part you miss. Uh, this is the page we're going to go to. So we're going to start dealing with the fact that there might be multiple things with exponents. And there's different ways to combine them. Uh, those who are following along with this, on a scale of zero, you don't remember anything, to five, you basically could just work on all the homework already. How much of powers do you remember from previous years? Like, I want to know how slow I should go over this. A lot of people are at three-ish, okay. So a three-ish to me probably means you need refreshing. Um, two and one, you, you forgot a lot of it. You probably need. So I'll go semi-slow. This page? How far did you guys go? Oh, OK. I'll redo this page anyway. <clears throat> so the, the other thing I realized this morning, we never talked about what we're going to do for a test for this chapter. Um, we kind of experimented last chapter with doing those little tests. And if I'm honest, I hated that a lot. Uh, it made a ton of work for me. You probably liked it because it was one topic at a time. And I, I get that. Um, but it made correcting for me kind of a nightmare because people are still making them up. People are retaking them. And so it, in terms of, I don't know if I can handle that the rest of the year. Like it would just be too much to keep track of to, you know, just everything and anything. Um, and I'm not a computer, so things get lost in my head. Um, we, we kind of are planning on taking just one test at the end of the unit. And then you'll definitely be able to make either a, a, a cheat sheet or a, probably not the packet, but you know, we'll, we'll talk about it first. This is kind of a big unit. Like there's a, there's a lot of things in it. And part of it is, is depending on how much you remember from last year. That's why I was kind of trying to check. Um, I believe the test is scheduled for like in two weeks or something like that. I think it was towards the end of January. Um, and so that's, I want to bring it up because we're not going to fly through these topics. Um, don't, don't be afraid to get help if you're feeling confused. Because exponents and, and powers and all this kind of stuff there are definitely parts that can get mixed up together in your head. And once you have a, once it makes sense to you, it's very easy. But if they are feeling mixed up and confusing, it feels extremely hard. So don't be afraid to come get help from me, especially first hour, right? You guys could always just come in 10 minutes early and like ask me some questions before class starts when nobody's really around and, and then you don't have to feel embarrassed about it or anything like that, that would work fine. There's always raptor time, just about anything. I, obviously, we have class and time to work, but if, if you don't feel comfortable asking then, you know, try to figure out a plan where you can get help because you don't want to feel confused at this by the time we get to the test. But you, you do have a couple weeks, so it's not a rush. Okay. <clears throat> My guess is you could possibly figure out what's going on just from the examples up at the top. Okay. Um, who should I call on? Taryn? Sure. Taryn, uh, let's take a look at the first one there. 2 to the second times 2 to the third equals 2 to the fifth. Um, in, your, in your words, what's going on? Oh, that's very good. That's a good addition there. Yeah, so the, the key thing is that they both have to be the same base. Now, all of these are, right? Like, they, but they have to be the same base. And if you're multiplying them together, you can add the powers. 
<clears throat> this is where it starts to feel confusing for some people, right? When you are multiplying, you add. Like, that immediately is where I, I get where the confusion comes, right? Because then we're going to have division subtract. We're going to have power to a power means multiply. And it, it feels confusing, so you got to try to learn to keep them straight. Uh, now, one thing Taryn was bringing up at the end is he said you keep the same base. And that's, that's perfect, because they have to have the same base to start. If that's different, you can't do it. Now, I, I don't really need to go over the rest of these. Um, the one thing that's probably missing, did you guys do the ones down here, too? OK, so you got the answers to these or something? <clears throat> um, Taryn, who, who's going to be the next person to answer? Bailey. Bailey. She loves to answer. Bailey, this first example, 3 to the third times 2 to the third times 3. Um, do you want me to ask a specific question on it? Do you feel like you're comfortable enough to just like do it and give me an answer? No. This last 3 right here that doesn't have a power, what does that mean? Oh, but I thought you had an answer. Oh, I see. <clears throat> so I bet you can figure out what this 3 means from the answer, though. Is your answer 3 to the 4th times 2 to the 3rd? Yeah. OK, where does that 4 come from? Um, probably to the adjacent to the 4th. I'm trying to think of different phrases. Can anybody help her out? What does it mean when it's a number by itself? Like there's no power shown. One. First power. If there's no power shown, it's a one. So the four came from adding the three and the one. <clears throat> now this very first question is actually semi-tricky because there's two different bases. And I, I would bet if I gave this on a test, I'm sure somebody would accidentally skip the fact seeing that that's different and just add up all the points. Um, I'm not going to try to be tricking you on a test and things like that because it's easy to miss too. So it's, it's not intended to be tricky, it's just easy to miss. Uh, okay, so three to the fourth because I add the two threes and then two to the third. It doesn't matter what order you write them. Your answer probably was the other way around. Probably. Um, is that Bella? Okay. Can you help me with the second one? Yeah. Okay. And they're all base six. Yeah. Okay, so what do they add up to? So instead of just giving you the answer you already have. Does nobody have that answer? Oh. You weren't here? Oh, okay. <clears throat> well, are they all the same base? Okay. So if they're all the same base, I can write the base again, add the powers together because they're being multiplied. What are they adding? So negative 5 plus 5 plus 0 comes out to be 0. So then the answer is 1, because anything to the 0 part is 1. Okay, good. Um, 
Does anybody want me to do any of these last two? Do they look? Yes. Which one? Oh, got it. Wait, which one? Are you done with that? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so with this one, the only tricky part is that you have two different bases. You have two different bases, so you would do them separately. So I'll start off with an X, and I'll add the X powers. Uh, seven plus negative six is one. So you can write the one, or you can leave it off, because the first power you don't usually write. Um, and then I'll do a Y. Negative three plus negative two would be negative five. Remember what we're supposed to do when we have a negative power? But you just did the homework on it. So turn the page back one. What do you do when you have a negative power? You turn it back another page if you need to. Because I think we wrote down the sentence about negative. Anytime you have a negative power, you're going to move it to the other part of the fraction as a positive answer. So this final one should be x over y5. Thank you. Where does it come from? Um, so if you have a negative power, you have to move it to the other part of the fraction. Oh, yeah. Now, the, the top one didn't really have a fraction, so that means it's the top. Okay. Okay. Uh, Charlie, who's going next? Or just a number? So they're all H's and they just add them up. The only thing semi difficult is these are bigger numbers. Okay, that's it for that topic. And then we have this topic, and I'll definitely stop for today after that. <clears throat> so I would like to do some of these together, and then I'll have you finish the rest of them on your own, and that'll just be our work for today. Um, we're gonna do we're gonna do three topics before we actually get to like the worksheets and the homework together. So uh, I won't do all three in one day, because that's a lot. I'm sure your Monday brain, well, you guys can't even say words yet, so but I know that you can't take three topics. Uh, this one's called a power to a power. So if you, it's generally going to be written in parentheses like that. It doesn't have to be, but it usually will be. So if you have something with a power, and that's taken to a power again, you're going to end up multiplying the powers together. So like say on this one, x squared to the fifth, you're going to take the 2 times 5, and you get 10. y to the fourth to the eighth, you're going to do 4 times 8. <clears throat> the big difference here is that you'll notice there's not two bases. That's, that's the most confusing part for most people looking at these problems. If you have one letter with multiple powers, you multiply them together. If you have two, well, two letters and they're being multiplied, then you add their powers. And it's not like it's hard individually, but when you start mixing them up, it will be. So that's why I'm trying to emphasize a lot. Um, uh, it also works for negative power. 
So negative 2 times 2 would give you negative 4 power. And then because it was a negative power, it moves to the bottom. And then 3 to the 4 is 81. That's where that final answer comes from. You don't even have a packet, do you? I didn't transfer packet. Can you help me with two to the third to the third? Perfect. You multiply the three and the three. Um, technically, you, you're supposed to probably find out what the answer to the ninth is, but nobody's going to know that one off the top of their head. So if you need a calculator for it, I'm not worried about it. Good. <clears throat> Can you help me with three to the sixth to the zero? Perfect. Um, it'll technically be 3 to the 0 when you multiply them, and then anything to the 0 is 1. Should we skip this one and go to a little bit harder one? Yes. Okay. We're going to go to the little bit harder one right here. And I can give you some guidance if you want that. I'm not beating this one. What'd you say? Oh. You think it's B25? Okay. Where'd you get that from then? Good. So the power to the power, you do that first. You get 24. And then you're multiplying times B to the first. So now that there's two letters together, you add their power. So then you get 25. Good. That's that's definitely a, a step up, a little bit more difficult. I'm assuming you guys want to do one more of those together, probably. Can you see the x2 and that? Uh, uh, above that. This can't go above. How'd you do that one? And then that's fine. Well, this is a negative? Um, one last person and we'll stop for today and then you guys can work on the rest of these yourselves. Who's the last person to do this one? Uh, Lucas, which one should we go with? Uh, last one? Sure. How do we approach it? Okay, so on the next line, you put these two together. So you've got A12, B negative 5. Good. Because they're different, you don't combine them, um, but you do move the negative one. So the final answer shouldn't have a negative answer. Good. Um, one thing I will point out on this one when you do it on your own. <coughs> X, Y written together, <coughs> these are these are actually separate. This is like saying X times Y times X squared cubed times Y cubed. So even though they're written next to each other, they're not necessarily together. Oh, it has have a one power and one power. Yes. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll stop here. Absolutely do those two questions. Now, if, if you're feeling pretty confident about these two questions, because they're considered difficult, you are more than welcome to kind of go on to the next page and check that out and try to go on on your own. 
and then tomorrow at the beginning of the hour, we'll do this together.